हेलो स्टूडेंट्स एज यू नो दैट इन आर प्रीवियस सेशन वी वर रिवाइजिंग चैप्टर नंबर सेवन दैट इज गेटिंग टू नो प्लान सो वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स दैट वी हैव रिवाइज इन आर प्रीवियस सेशन इन आर प्रीवियस सेशन वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट लीव वॉट वी हैव स्टडीड we see the variation in the size shape and the color of the leaf then we have studied about the structure of the leaf what does any of the leaf consist of the leaf consist of the petiole lamina veins and midrib what is petiole the part of the leaf that is attached to the stem is a petiole the broad green portion of the leaf is known as the lamina of the leaf and in the middle of the leaf we see the prominent line that line is known as a midrib on both the sides of the midrib the lines are there these lines are known as veins and the design that is made by the veins is known as the leaf venation we have also studied about two types of leaf venation what are the two types of leaf venation one is reticulate venation in which we observe the net like design on the both sides of the midrib then we have studied about the parallel venation in parallel venation the veins are parallelly arranged to each other then we have studied the two important function of the leaf what are the two important functions of the leaf one is the transpiration process and second is the photosynthesis process so what do you mean by transpiration process water comes out of the leaf in the form of vapor this process is known as the transpiration process transpiration process helps to keep the leaves cool it also helps in the transportation of minerals then we have studied about photosynthesis process what is photosynthesis process in this process leaves prepare their own food in the presence of sunlight and the green pigment present in the leaf known as chlorophyll in this process leaves use water and carbon dioxide while they release oxygen in the air we have also studied that the food that is prepared by the leaf is stored in the form of starch so i hope these topics are clear to you in today's session we will study about roots and flowers so now let us first revise with the roots what were the topics that we have studied we have studied the function of the roots and the type of the roots what are the two important function of the roots roots help in the growth of the plant and the second is they anchors the plant the two type of the roots that we have studied are tap root and fibrous root so now let us first revise with the function of the roots first function of the root is they help in the growth of the plant so how does the root help in the growth of the plant we will revise that with this activity in this activity we have to take the plant two plant of the same kind what we have to do in pot a we have to plant one plant with the roots and in the plant b we have to cut the roots of the plant and then plant it we have to regularly water them what you will observe after a week that the in pot a the plant will grow while in pot b the plant will not grow what does this conclude this concludes that for the growth of the plant the roots are necessary if the plants do not have the roots it will not grow now in this activity we will study the second function of the root that is root anchors the plant so what do you require to carry out this activity you will require a bowl a wet cloth or the cotton 
and few seeds of gram, maize, etc. In this activity, I have used the moon seeds. What you have to do is you have to take the bowl and a wet cloth. Place the wet cloth inside the bowl. You can even use the cotton. Then put few seeds in it. You have to sprinkle water every day to keep the cotton moist. What you will observe slowly that the sprouts start germinating out of that seeds. You can see the difference how the sprouts are growing. After few days you will observe that the sprouts have turned into the young plant. In the image you can observe how the roots have grown throughout the cotton. Now after a week try to separate the roots from the cotton. Will you be able to do it? No, it will not be that easy to separate the roots from the cotton. In the similar manner the roots grow in the soil. Roots help to hold the plant firmly to the soil. They anchor the soil. So I hope through this activity it is clear to you how the roots help in anchoring the soil. You can also try to carry out this activity. Now we will revise about types of fruits. There are two types of fruits. One is tap root and another is fibrous root. So first let us study about tap root. You can see in the image how does the tap roots look like. In tap root there is a main root which is known as the tap root and we can also observe the small roots arises from the tap root and the these small roots are known as lateral roots. Carrot, turnip, beetroot, parsley, dandelion have the tap root system. Now we will study about fibrous root. In fibrous root, there is no main root as it was present in the tap root. All the roots are seen similar. So, Onions, tomato, sweet corn, peas, etc. are some of the examples of the plants in which we can see fibrous root system. In this slide, you can observe the root of the moon plant. So, what do you observe? Which type of root do the moon plant have? It has a tap root. You can observe the main root in the middle that is known as the tap root and the lateral roots. There is an interesting relation between leaf venation and the type of roots in plants. So, the leaf which have parallel venation have fibrous roots. For example, banana, maize, rice, etc. And the plants with the reticulate venation are likely to have tap roots. For example, rose, carrot, radish, etc. So by looking at the leaf, we can determine which type of the roots do the plant have. Now we will revise about flowers. We can see the variety in flowers. Some of the flowers are small in size while some of the flowers are bigger in size. We see the variety in the color of the flowers. You can even observe that in some of the plants the petals are joined together while in some of the plants the petals are not joined together. In this slide you can observe that the petals are joined together. Example is Datura. In Datura flowers the petals are joined together. Now we will study the structure of the flower. This small leaf-like structure that you see that are joined to the petals are known as sepals. 
Now to study the inside of the flux, the petals and the sepals are removed. You will observe a stamen. Stamen is the male part of the flower which contain anther and filament. And pistil that is the female part of the flower. It contains stigma, style and ovary. Ovary is the lowermost swollen part of the pistil. If you cut the ovary, you will observe the small bead like structure that are present inside the ovary. And these small bead like structure are known as ovules. The number of sepals, petals, stamen and pistil may be different for different flowers. And even these parts may be absent in some of the flowers. So now in these slides you can observe some of the images of plants. For example, herbs, tomato, coriander, ginger, wheat, etc. Shrubs like lemon, rose, tulsi, trees like neem, mango, coconut, creepers, watermelon, muskmelon, cucumber. In this slide you can observe the climbers like bottle gourd, grapes. You can observe the reticulate venation in hibiscus, rose, tulsi, papaya. Parallel venation can be observed in banana, coconut, grasses. These are some of the examples of plant having the tap root, fibrous root. So we have revised all the topic of this chapter. I hope all the topics are clear to you. So what's the activity for today? You have to draw the label diagram of stamen and pistil. Now let us solve some of the MCQ questions. Question number one is a plant which have branches at the base and the options are herbs, shrubs, creepers and trees. So among this which of the plant have the branches at the base? So the correct option is B. Shrubs. Question number 2. A tomato plant has stem of which color? Green, red, sometimes green, sometimes red or neither green nor red. So which is the correct answer? Tomato plant is a herb. So herbs have the stem of which color? Green. So answer is A. Green. Third, the lines on the broad green part of the leaf are called the lines that we observe on the broad green part of the leaf is known as veins and the broad green part is known as lamina. Here the correct answer is B that is veins. To test the presence of starch, why is leaf covered with the spirit? So, in the activity we have studied that the leaf is immersed in the spirit solution. So, why the leaf is immersed in the spirit solution? To kill the leaf, to dissolve the chlorophyll, to remove starch or none of these. So, what is the correct answer? Correct option is B. To dissolve the chlorophyll. To dissolve the chlorophyll, we have covered the leaf with spirit. Fifth, which of the following statement is or are correct? So, which of the following statements are correct? Stem absorbs water and mineral from the soil. Stem conduct water from roots to the leaf. Stem conduct food from the roots to the various part of the plant or none of the above. So, among this, which of the statement is correct? Is statement A is correct? Do stem absorbs water and mineral from the soil? No, it's not the stem. It's the root that absorbs water and minerals from the soil. Next is stem conduct water from roots to the leaf? 
yes this statement is correct stem conduct water from roots to the leaf third statement is stem conduct food from the roots to the various part of plant do roots prepare the food no so b statement is the right answer it's the correct statement that the stem conduct water from the roots to the leaf last is leaf absorb oxygen in the process of photosynthesis is this statement true or false do leaf absorb oxygen no leaf absorb carbon dioxide so this statement is false leaf releases oxygen in the atmosphere during the photosynthesis process so i hope this chapter is clear to you we will end our session here